hello and welcome back to Clownfish TV. It is me, Geeky Sparkles. And today it's just me. Neon and I were going to do this video together, but we ran out of time. So now you're getting just me for this video. So this morning I came across this article. Wonder Woman's new villain is everything her haters pretend she represents. You know, cause men. And as a woman, I have thoughts. So before we get into it any further, please like and subscribe. If you do, you'll get a woohoo, woohoo. And also I wanna remind you all to please go out and check out um, on shopclownfish.com, Shadowbinders Volume 3 is a pre-order. It's gonna ship next year. It's gonna be for book three. Book one and two are available also in limited quantities. I'm very excited about this. It's the first new Shadowbinders content we've done in a while. So you can go out there and check that out and I appreciate all your support, thank you. So yeah, this, oh my God, where do I start? So Tom King's new Wonder Woman series begins with a storyline that asks difficult questions about Diana's position in the DC universe, okay? So in DC Comics' newly launched Wonder Woman series, Diana finds herself in a position she's never been in before, a fugitive in the adopted home she's risked her life for countless times to protect. Moreover, the cause of her outlaw status is based on age-old prejudices that she's fought for decades to disprove. Wonder Woman number one by Tom King and Daniel Semperi. Um, a bar fight turns into an international incident kicking off a story that promises to be full of political commentary as it's high octane superhero action. Look, a couple things. We're going to talk about Tom King in a minute. First of all, Neon's comment was, wait, it's a book about disproving uh, that Wonder Woman hates men written and drawn by men. So we're going to say that it's not the, that, you know, Wonder Woman isn't, isn't a symbol of female empowerment. Wonder Woman doesn't hate men. And it's all about, you know, this whole, the, the, the sh sticking it to the, to the chuds who don't understand and who have prejudices against her because she's a woman drawn and written by men. Um, yeah, yeah, that'll show them. Also, I can't wait. I'm sure they're lining up to read the article that's full of political commentary. I mean, the car comic that's full of political commentary. Because that's exactly what we want in our entertainment and comics. More political commentary. I want to point out that um, Neil wanted me to mention that uh, Tom King was the guy who went after Jay Lee. Jay Lee was the one who did the cover for Ethan Van Skyver's one project. And here's what he had posted. He's like, two weeks ago, June and I took Loki to San Diego to see a specialist and unfortunately did not survive. But they're talking about... Um, they were talking about going through that emotionally. And then the internet, he avoided like the plague came in, companies that were working for calling me, friends reaching out to me, hate pouring out of strangers' mouths, accusing me of things I had no knowledge of. Um, I'm not part of any group. Um, they never made it to the beach. They had to deal with all this backlash because Tom King went out to social media and raised holy hell because how dare this guy do work for Ethan Van Skyver and Comicsgate. But it's okay, guys. It's okay. Um, you know, Tom King does apologize after the fact, after he, you know, started all this stuff. Because it's okay. Here he didn't know anything about Comicsgate. So it's okay. Because if he did it knowingly, then he deserves to be canceled. But he didn't know. So it's okay. I'm going to apologize after I got my ass kicked by everyone. This is that guy. And now he's going to lecture people, me included, a woman, on female issues and empowerment with Wonder Woman. Oh, hot damn, I can't wait. So, and now I don't really, really read the Wonder Woman comics, but Wonder Woman's one of my favorite characters of all time. When I was little, I had the Wonder Woman underoos. I have the adult size woman, Wonder Woman underoos. I have loved Wonder Woman since as long as I can remember. Okay. So a bar fight. I and mean, then you see the bar fight. Look, it's redneck Hicks, of course, in the bar. It's like, look, you got, oh, look, he's got a red hat on. Seriously. You know, because only, only those with red hats, you know, would, would ever question or ever not apologize to a woman. So what happens apparently is this other Amazonian goes into a bar and, and gets into a fight and slaughters every man on the premises, okay? When one patron bumps into her while she's playing pool and he makes matters worse by refusing to apologize and now you get a massacre because don't you know, men in red hats, they wouldn't apologize to you. Look, there are some dudes who wouldn't apologize, but there are a lot of women who wouldn't apologize either. And I gotta tell you, I can, as a woman, I've had, often had men apologize. 
Like if they bump into you accidentally, they say, excuse me, I'm sorry. Most people don't just bump into you and be like, hey, whatever. Let me straighten my MAGA hat and keep walking. I'm like, this is, stereotyping's bad unless they do it. Again, this is the a- asshole who went after somebody else because he thought that they were commiscate because they did a cover for somebody and got paid for a job. But luckily, they, they, they lectured him into it. But it all happened on a day that was really tragic for them. Because this this little bitch got his panties in a bunch. Bitch is gender neutral term now, Tom. I have decided. Okay. And plus, you're not going to lecture me, a woman, on what a woman can say and can't say. So fuck off kindly. But anyway, hot damn, a book about hating on men and how it's wrong, written by two men. So um, it's supposed to be they're going to try to work on this... Um, the, the the prejudices against Amazonians, okay? Because, you know, everybody's always thought that, that Wonder Woman hates men. Don't you know? Even though I've never ever thought that, especially if you've seen the comics in the past, the shows in the past, the movies. I didn't get the idea that she hates men. I mean, I get an idea that Amazonians might be leery of the outside world and men, but I've never gotten the, the idea that Wonder Woman herself hates men. So, um... While the new series will surely contain the action and adventure that Wonder Woman readers have come to love and expect, other compelling reasons to be interested in the series is the plot line that King decided to use. He's going to lecture you guys. Having the series inciting, inciting incident be one of Wonder Woman's fellow warriors from the all-female Amazonian society, brutally killing, brutally killing a bunch of men, situates the story firmly on the conversation about a controversial historical complaint against Wonder Woman. The complaint which has followed this character since her debut in the 40s. Wonder Woman is a feminist tool to create and liberate women from their traditional roles and facilitate the end of the patriarchy. That's what the book's, that's, that's, the, that's the, the theming of the book. Hot damn can't wait. I can't wait to spend money to be lectured to, especially by men telling me about patriarchy. Uh, yay! Um... But the issue of gender equality, women's empowerment, and social movements such as Me Too, front and center of the cultural, cultural debate. Me Too? Me Too. You want to go there with the Me Too movement that had the, the, the group that, that embezzled money and had the cans and clothes and everything else. They, or they had money and it was going to big lavish parties and wasn't actually going to the people it was supposed to go to. You mean that, that movement? Um, women have been, the women's empowerment and gender equality, this has been going on for decades, guys. You're a little late to the party on this one, okay? I love it, but there, but, but that's okay. A man, a man's going to tackle this plot line, guys. A man, two men who took jobs from women are going to tell women about gender equality and women's empowerment. There's gender equality and women's empowerment. Why are they, why are there dudes writing this book and, and illustrating the book? Why? Why aren't they women? If they really, truly cared about women's empowerment and uh, gender equality and being authentic to women to disprove, you know, this, this narrative, why would you not hire women? I mean, it's a fair question. I'm just, I'm just saying. I can't wait for a guy to tell me all about it. Um, King's going to tackle this plot line in a lightning rod title, such as Wonder Woman is sure to attract the attention and criticism of people who buy into the idea that underneath it all, Wonder Woman hates men. Most people don't think that. I mean, I can see back in the 40s where they were concerned because Wonder Woman was a little bit progressive for the 40s, and I'm sure women loved it. Um, they were all out there doing their stuff, and they were probably like, yay. And back in the 40s, too, you have to remember, like, during the different, uh, the, like, World War II, women were out there doing the work because, the you know, a lot of the men were away at war. So women were already empowered, and I'm sure they made this character because of that. You know, you have Rosie the Riveter and all that. And I'm sure that they were, it was for that audience, and they loved it. Most people don't think Wonder Woman hates men. Tom here's going to tell you all about it. However, the interesting tweak that King seems to pull off in Wonder Woman number one is that it sets up a conflict between Wonder Woman and a character who is, for all intents and purposes, the embodiment of specific criticism against Wonder Woman. So you're going to make a stereotyped Amazonian character to embody the criticisms so that Wonder Woman can undo it, written and... They're talking about establishing the story in this way. Their creative team have a chance to directly address criticisms of the character in a modern, relevant way. It's, guys, it's political and for modern audiences. Hurry up and buy these books. This is the opposite. This is the opposite of what you want to happen. Because as soon as you start saying this shit, people aren't going to buy the books. Oh, here's a bunch of guys in a bar fight with, with a red hat on. We're going we're gonna to take on the stereotypes by stereotyping a character ourselves. Um, and we're going to tell you all about women empowerment and me too movement by men. 
um, for modern audiences. I don't think this is going to go the way DC was hoping it was going to go. Uh, as a woman, I think it's kind of shit. You lost me when you had a, a title and you're talking about female empowerment and uh, gender issues when you're not even putting women on the book. I mean, right there, you lost me. I might have given it a little more of a pass if there had been women involved, but there are not even women involved in the fucking book. It also gives the series an opportunity to address its criticisms and its terms. Put another way, Wonder Woman's new nemesis gives King the chance to proactively address King, a man, to proactively address the issues in a manner that is best suited for the argument he believes the story should be making. King, a dude, is going to proactively address the issues suited to the argument he believes the story should be making about women empowerment and prejudices against Wonder Woman and, and you know, the patriarchy and all that shit. Okay. Uh, this is a great way to ensure Wonder Woman can keep the moral high ground while at the same time producing socially relevant DC Comics content. Because, you know, that's what everybody wants. Socially relevant DC Comics uh, about politics and uh, gender studies by men. So even the audience that you wanted to go after, if it was the female audience, you're, you did a book that preaching it, preaching about how Wonder Woman is perceived and, the, and the, the misconceptions about the character uh, because of men, by men. You can't even make this shit up. But then again, this, uh, this guy also goes after somebody because he thinks he's Comicsgate because he did a project. But it was okay, guys. As soon as he talked to them and realized that he didn't understand what Comicsgate was, it was okay. You know, he he was the hero. You know, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just tired. I'm so tired. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure a lot of other minority groups understand what I'm talking about here. I am so tired of these people trying to lecture and, 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 you know, teach a lesson about these moral political arguments involving people like women or minority groups um, by stereotyping and not being in the group represented to begin with. Now, look, I'm not one that believes that somebody has to be right. You have to, to, to do a character, you have to be like that character. I don't believe that at all, but they do. They're canceling people for doing comics gate shit. This guy is one of them. But he thinks it's, it's wrong to do a cover for Ethan Van Skyver because of Comics Gate. But it's completely okay to write about women and women's issues and, and gender issues and all this misconception about a woman. But it's okay if he does it. But you can't do something that he thinks is wrong. Like, he's this, this idiot probably stands for, yes, voice actors should only represent the characters they're doing and we need more representation in comics. But, you know, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the Wonder Woman book because I'm me. The double standard, if they didn't have double standards, they would have no standards at all. The hypocrisy is just laughable. Anyway, please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.